All right, so we're looking at 2013 practical paper two. And I'm looking at question number two. If you notice, it says you're to use output cell style for headings. Output cell styles for heading. How do we get that? So this heading here, ID number, name, status, status, coursework, coursework marks, project one, project two, project three, and final should be in output cell style heading. So I'm going to quickly show you how you go about put it, putting, putting the heading in output cell, cell style heading. So let me bring up Microsoft Excel and quickly show you how to do that. So let us quickly jot something inside these cells. We could have row one to have the headings. So I'm going to just insert it there. We could call heading one boy, girl, and baby. All right, so the first thing you have to do is to block your heading. Always remember, when you're formatting anything, you need to what? Highlight or block it first, right? Then under the cell style grouping, right here where you see cell styles, you're going to look for output. There you go. See output? All right, and then you would click on it. And what you notice? It shows you what it would look like. Let me zoom it up so you can see better. So that's what the whole output cell style looks like. Are you following? Mm -hmm. All right, so what they could do if they ask a question like this in the multiple choice, again, is to put it in procedure form, step-by-step -step form, and you have to choose the, the, the response that has the correct procedure or steps. Are you following? Mm -hmm. All right. Good. This comment balloon has to do with the section that is in balloon and it says you have to insert a formula to calculate the average mark. Now, if you want to find the average of something, it must be of what is there. Are you following? 70, 83, 93, or is it 95? 95? So that's for Claude Ambrose. So you'll have to use average formula to calculate the final for Claude Ambrose. And you know, once you have found your um, formula, you can also autofill it to the others. You wouldn't have to be you wouldn't have to be putting it in for each of them. Good. So what would be the formula to find the average? Yeah. If you're finding the average you would not use some you would find you'd use average so your formula would be equal average open bracket and the range which would be 70 83 95 what range is that from d3 to f3 count um it's one two three so it's in row three and a b c d e f so it's from d3 to f3 first of all you have to be in the cell where you want your formula so what cell would you be in g3 right so you click in G3, which is right under final for Claude Ambrose, and then you would type equal. Remember, every formula begins with an equal sign. So you type equal, and then the word average, open your bracket, and then put in your range, which would be 
D3 to F3. And remember, in Excel, the colon represents two. If you were to write it manually, what would be your formula? Equal D3 manually. If you should write it from scratch, that is. Without using a built-in formula. If you should write it from scratch, it would be equal, open bracket, D3 plus E3 plus F3, close bracket, and then you would put your backslash to represent divide. And how many? By what? Three, because it's three scores that you're adding and finding the average of. All right, and of course, you would press enter to get your answer. Is everybody clear on that? All right. What I know for sure is that when you get a question in multiple choice where formula is concerned, sometimes they leave off the equal sign. So the formula might be partially correct, and because you know it is partially correct, you might be tempted to choose that answer. But don't choose an answer without the equal in front of it. Are you following? All right. Take a look at the bottom comment balloon. Insert today's date. How do you go about inserting today's date? First, you have to select the cell with the date. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. And then the shortcut is called Control 1, Control and 1, and you get the shortcut to insert the date. And then you click on the date and the type that you want. I could show you the long way. Let me go in Excel and show you the long way. Today, they, today's date is June 25th, 2020. I could click on the cell with the date and go to Format. And then I could go to Format Cells and choose the heading, the category that says Date. And then I could choose whichever date format or date type I like. Suppose I want this one. I could click on it and select OK, and it will change the format. Let me try another one. Click on that one and select OK. It's not changing. Can you tell me why? This is the one it's in. Let me try this one. It's not changing. Can you tell me why? It is. Once you click on the cell and you go to format cell, usually you click on number heading, date, and you select the one that you want. Then OK. I'm not sure it is not changing, but that's a long route. All right, let us move on. So, initial caps do you remember what you would do to put something in initial caps? You would put the first letter of each word in capital letters. All right. And bold, everybody know how to bold. Again, there's initial caps here. Leave two clear lines. It means you are to press enter twice. Am I correct? Make each box 1.5 inch or 3.81 centimeter wide. Where do you go to get that? Go in the margin settings. Am I correct? 
And what's the procedure? Layout. And then margins. Then custom margins. And you will put in your measurements. Am I correct? Yes. All right, so pretty much everything there is a repeat of what they would normally bring up on a yearly basis. So I will not go any further with this one.